microphone. So just raise your hand and wait until you have a microphone so that everyone understands the question. Okay, Nicola. Hi, I'm uh, Nicola Peton. I'm a web developer at Object Fusion, a small company in France where we sell a web solution written in Smalltalk. And we develop a web framework named Iliad, which is the topic of this talk. Okay, so I'll try to uh, split the talk in two parts. First, I'll show you uh, what is Iliad about very quickly with a few slides. Then I'll try to write a small application and you know the most uh, never work, so I hope this one will. Uh, Iliad is a two years old framework, but we already use it in production and we sell applications with it. Uh, it's available for Faro Smalltalk and Squeak Smalltalk. In fact, it's the same version for both. And uh, there is a GNU Smalltalk version, which is the one we use for development and to put uh, our applications in production. Uh, there should be soon a visual work version. It's uh, still in uh, a work in progress, but we are confident we'll have one uh, before the end of the year. The year. Okay, uh, who is behind this project? Of course, there is me and Sebastian, which is uh, right there. Hello. <laughs> Uh, we also work with uh, Stephen Costu, who is responsible from the, for the Squeak and Faro port of Iliad. And we have a few contributors, mainly from the GNU Smalltalk community. So thanks to you for helping us and having fun with us. Uh, especially Paolo Bonzini, Eli Green, Canol Gokel, and Bertouet Serra. Okay, so uh, how does Iliad work? Uh, Iliad has uh, three layers. The first one, the top one is uh, stateful uh, standalone widgets. Widgets are graphical uh, components, very similar to seaside components. And uh, they, can, uh, they have decorators like in seaside. There is a kind of callbacks using block closures. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, RESTful applications. Applications are also graphical objects, but um, they know how to dispatch requests. So we have, on one side, we have stateful objects. On the other side, we have RESTful applications. And to build HTML, we use uh, composite elements, which are the low-level part of Iliad. Um, each element is uh, a representation for an HTML tag and we compose a page, and then in a second step, we uh, write the HTML into a stream. Okay, and on we have uh, another layer on the client side, which is a small uh, JavaScript library to uh, automatically convert requests in AJAX. So we have three AJAX, uh, but of course it can be uh, used without it, then you have normal requests everywhere. Okay, so uh, I want to show you a very quick uh, demo of uh, Iliad, just to show you how it basically works, and then I'll try to write uh, a small application. Do you hear me? Yeah? Okay, good. Do you see something? Yeah? yeah? Okay, um, let me increase. Ah. Okay. Mm. Bit less. Okay. Uh, so here you can see uh, a counter example, which is directly taken from Seaside. Uh, each counter, let's switch to the multi counter directly. Each counter is a standalone widget. Uh, there are two actions here. One to increase the counter, one to decrease it. Uh, I can show you an example. Okay, we increase the counter. Of course, stateful, if I refresh, if I refresh the page, we still have its state. Each counter is fully standalone. Okay. Uh, and you can see that it's, uh, it uses AJAX by default. Okay. Uh, if I disable JavaScript, 
Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, did I do a refresh? Okay. So if I disable JavaScript, we still have the same behavior, but it does a normal request. Okay. Okay, I can uh, open Firebug. Do you know Firebug? It's a tool to, uh, okay. Here you see I have four divs. Each one uh, includes a, a counter. Here you have the generated code. Okay, and if I increase, let's say, the last one. Okay, you see it's updated using Ajax. In fact, um, the server, Iliad, sent the the data to the client in JSON, and then the JavaScript layer responsible for updating the client state. That's how we maintain state using AJAX. Okay, so maybe you want to see the code for the counter. So, um, code is quite simple. We take an element in a, in a block as parameter. We build an header with its value. We build an anchor and uh, put uh, an action an action in a block with a text. And uh, the difference here with uh, Seaside is that because we use Ajax, we have to, to uh, say to Ilya that the widget state has changed. So we mark it dirty. So Ilya knows that during an Ajax request, it has to refresh it and send it back to the client. So. Uh, one thing you can see here is that we never write hard-coded JavaScript in Iliad. The layer is responsible for that, so we don't need uh, to write uh, jQuery code or prototype code. Uh, it's Iliad.js which does that for us. Okay, so now let's write something. I tried to write a microblog application in a in 15 minutes. <laughs> so I hope I manage to go to the end of uh, the application. Yeah. Okay, so I already wrote uh, the models here, uh, very simply, uh, simple classes. I have a post which has two instance variables, the username of the uh, user which posts uh, on the microblog and the contents of the post, which is simply a string, okay? And I have a repository which where I can add a post, remove a post, see my post with a lazy initialization, and a uh, singleton here to access the repository from everywhere. Okay, in the Iliad part, I have a directory, which is a, a class to uh, send static files where I already wrote a bit of CSS. And okay, let's start. So I, I'm starting with uh, a subclass of application. Yep. Uh, let's call it a post application. Okay. Uh, each application has a path, so I have to add it on the class side. It will be the base path of the application. Uh, let's say post. Okay. And on the instance side, I will add the controller method. By the default controller method is index. This is the only one we'll use here. We don't need more. So index. Let's see if it works. I answer bit of HTML. Now HTML, H1. Okay, let's try it. Oh, cool. What's wrong here? Post. Ah, yeah. I have to say, to put it in the uh, controls category, else it's not uh, allowed to be used as a controller method. Cool, it works. Okay, so now I'm going to add a few widgets to um, to create the microblog. Okay, let's say 
here change the title okay and add uh, self a form here we'll use a separate widget for the form but you can put it anywhere you want okay and an accessing method uh, how did I call it? New post form. Okay. Uh. Okay. Put in instance variable, a new class. Okay, it's a widget. Okay. Uh, so now I have to build the contents of my widget. It will be a simple form. Uh, with two uh, inputs, one text area. Uh, new post will be uh, the new post to add to the repository. I didn't add the method yet, but I will just after this one. Uh, let's say its contents will be the value. The value is taken as parameter of the block. Okay, and one for the name of the user, maybe. Okay, now I, all I have to do is to add a button to submit the form. Uh. Okay, so this should almost work. I only need to have a new post method. Okay. Okay, that should work. Oh uh, no, I forgot one. Uh, send post, which is uh, submit the saving the post to the repository. Uh, new post. Self. Okay, let's see if this works. Yeah, seems so. Let's add something. Hello, ESEG. Okay, we don't see anything here because uh, I forgot to tell um, the Iliad to refresh the widget. So here I have to say the widget change. So self mark. Dirty. We also miss, of course, a list of posts, so we won't see anything here. I can post a new one, but we won't see anything. So I'm going to add a new widget to see the list of posts. Okay. Post list. The post list will be a new widget. Okay. And now the contents of the post list. Uh, self. 
self post reverse. Hmm. Hmm. How can I do it? Okay. Splitting it in two methods, one global and one for each post. So for a post, uh, we'll have uh, a, a div, maybe. And one subdiv for the contents. And another one for the name of the guy who posted it. Okay. And we have to access posts. It will answer AG post uh, repository current post. Okay, let's see if this works. Yeah, it works. Uh, now I'm cheating a bit. I'm going to use a CSS I wrote yesterday. I will put everything in a div. Okay, and the CSS now. Oh, no. Ah, okay. Yeah, it works. Uh, why don't I have my post? Hmm. I removed something? Ah, yes, okay. Ah, it works. Can ha what? No, I only posted one, I think. Right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, now what I would like, now what I would like is to uh, update this one, this widget, each time this one is dirty. Each time I send a new post, I would like to update this one too. So uh, I can do that easily. Uh, up, let's say, in this one. I add a dependent widget to the post list. Okay. Uh, my widgets are already initialized, so I have to, the simplest way to remove my session, to start again. Okay. It works. Uh, okay, so what could we do now? Uh, what I would like now, we have our AJAX application, it works working fine. What I would like to, up, if I open a second uh, Firefox window on a HTTP, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Whoa. Yeah, here. Some three thousand. Okay, I can send a new post here. Okay, 
This one is not updated. I would like to, to uh, add some comment here to update both windows each time someone sends a new post. So to do this, uh, in Iliad we have um, a simple way to use Comet in applications. We use a similar mechanism than uh, announcements. I think everyone here know what is what are announcements. So I create uh, a subclass of Comet event or Comet announce, and I can call it a new post event. Uh, no, I don't want instance variables. Okay, and I will trigger the announce when I post a new form and su subscribe the post list to this uh, announce. So when I send the post, I mark still mark it dirty, but I also trigger uh, the eg new post event. Uh, try get my event is it new or not? I don't remember. Okay, we'll see. And in the well, post list, when I initialize my widget, I also uh, subscribe to the EEG new post event. Okay, and that's all. Now. If I remove my session, okay, let's decrease a bit, okay. Um, Did you have to reload the session? No. Uh, here maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Uh, yeah, let me reload just in case. And this one might be too. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Great, huh? Uh, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Ah, yeah, it doesn't work because uh, I have to add in my application a special widget to, uh, to actually trigger the comment event on the client side. So here I miss... Uh, Comet connection, that's it. It's a special widget to get Comet events. Okay, I forgot to reload this one. <laughs> oh, what's going on? What? Ah, yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, let me remove all posts here. Okay. Empty. Empty. Do I actually have my comment request here? Not sure, huh? Ah, oh yeah. I have it. I, yep. See here, it's waiting for a comment event. We use HTTP long polling to use co to use comment. Up. Bye bye. Okay. Huh. <laughs> you you won't have comment, I think, today. Where? On the right. What this? No. Okay. Huh. Demos never work, right? Ah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, where was it? Uh, up here. Send post. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Getting tired of the world. 
Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so uh, I didn't have time to show you um, all features of Iliad. You show uh, that we have um, stateful widgets. We use elements, composite elements, to build HTML, which are stateless components. And uh, we have, we saw only one controller method, but you can add as many as you want, and of course we use widgets inside of them. Okay, that's it. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes? Um, thanks for that. It was in really interesting. I couldn't help but notice a lot of similarities with Seaside. Um, would you mind highlighting some of the differences and why you decided to do your own thing versus um, addressing uh, some of the needs of your own within the context of the existing frameworks that are out there? Okay, yes. Uh, obviously, uh, Iliad takes some important parts from Seaside. It also takes uh, some parts from uh, IDA Web, especially the element uh, ERG to build HTML. Uh, we did Iliad uh, mainly because uh, we, wanted, we wanted to have our own tool with REST applications. To we wanted to be able to build REST applications easily. We didn't want to have to write JavaScript everywhere, but we wanted to have modern applications with Ajax. And, uh, and it's fun to build a, a framework. That's an important part too. Yes? Wait, please. Um, do you have some summary of the experience of the benefits you have with your new um, architecture based on CSAT uh, and AIDA web, uh, except having a project and having fun? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the last What's part. What's the benefit? Do, what, what do you gain from not using it in the CSAT style? Ah, well, what did we gain? Uh, speed, maybe. We, we write application very, very quickly with Iliad. We don't have to go into details, we just, we just write HTML, widgets, control flow quickly, and everything works uh, out of the box. Because may maybe it's because uh, we, we know it very well, because we wrote it, I don't know. That doesn't answer your question, maybe. Well, it's an answer, thank you. Okay. I believe that you write it in um, GNU Smalltalk, is that right? Yes. So, but you demoed it in, in Faro. Yes. I seem to recall there was an interview with you a while back, and it yes. seemed to be like it was a manual porting process from... Yeah. Uh, Has, have you changed that in any way? Yes, yes. Uh, hopefully, Paolo uh, Bonzini, the maintainer of GNU Smalltalk, uh, wrote uh, a simple script to convert from GNU Smalltalk to Squeak and back. So we don't have to do it manually anymore. I have a question about your code. When I saw most of the building blocks you used, you had just methods returning blocks. Yes. So wha what made you doing this like this and not, not using Wizard or <laughs> what would be kind of um, expected? Uh, yes, that's an interesting topic. We may change that in the future. We don't know yet. Uh, the problem is we don't want to have methods with, with parameters in controllers because we have to add some... Uh, uh, you see here, um, here, here, this is in fact the string corresponding to the controller method. So we don't, of course, don't want to write this. So we, we would have to add, we would need to, to do some, uh, some hacks in, uh, in Iliad itself to add this. Maybe we'll do it, I don't know, it's not sure yet. Well, um, uh, stripping on colon is not, not much at, at that point. Anyway, you, you based on, on um, convention at that point. So having yes. a post there and post on colon is, is not far away, I think. No, you're right. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, no, we only took the element ERC and part of the application class to have rest. So no, but now we we 
uh, maintain our own yeah, shear of elements. So no, it's not either. 